gods be bum poked. You must hang on, milady. More hold. Hello. Whoa, what's with the tree? Stay with me a bit longer, Lady Daphne. You, Jacob? Heal, Mohold. Down. Who asks? A witcher. Saw your notice. Hold up. A witcher, you say? Like in Louis Herrera's tales and fables. Luckier than a green, bleeding leprechaun I am. See, not a soul around believes this tree is Daphne, the cursed lady of legend. But you, you could lift the curse. Bit too old to believe in bedtime stories, aren't you? Once your chops busted, Witcher. How old I am, that is none of your porking concern. Fair point. Not my business what you believe, either. Ha! Huh. I'm content we see eye to eye. Then we shouldn't have made that comment to begin with. Why do you care about this tree? So what makes you think there's a girl cursed inside the tree? Well, I came out with my dog, Moholt, to cut her down. Axe in hand, a broad swing I took. The edge burrowed deep in her trunk, and bum botch me if blood didn't spurt forth. Whoa. My jaw dropped in the dirt, but right then I knew. Every jot of it in the tale of Daphne, Gareth, and the Witch of Lynx Craig. Don't tell me. From Herrera's tales and fables. You porking bet. <laughs> Second edition. I meant it in Octavo. I know those tales by heart. My nan read them to put me to sleep. Guess she read it cover to cover, colophon included. Got me curious, gotta admit. You really think the old tales are true? Taking the weepy, are you? Do you think me balmy? No, it's just these are dark, grim times. No room for nights pure of heart or happily ever afters. So I don't often run into folk like you. Yes, true, the times are crud pie. Uh, but I see this as all the more reason to remember the tales. My gran would say, if you know not what to do, Think to the chessboard knight and noble Alondra, and the path they would choose. She schooled me so thorough in it, I could not do otherwise even if I wished to. Fairy tales generally show good morals and good people doing good things anyway, so I don't think it's a bad thing to believe in fairy tales. Let me take a look at the tree. Careful now! This tree is definitely a little bit weird. Gods be bum poked. Just look at the tree. It's not a normal tree. Oh, blood. Swear I hear sobs in the rustling leaves. <gasps> oh. Oh no, this might be the last one left that hasn't been chopped. Actually does bleed. Looks like human blood too. And the bark. Resembles hypertrophic scars in places. Medallions humming like crazy. Intense magic at work here. The doggy just moved away. Blood. Seeped from the direction of the tree, judging by the shape of the stain. Was your name Mortold? Where'd you go? Logger was making good time. Strange, though. Willow's isolated. No other trees near it. It's a willow. I thought willows usually at the top, they droop down. That's the definition of a willow, right? To my knowledge. Oh, that's really scary. It does seem like it's true. And? Did you look at the tree close? Mm-hmm. Actually does bleed. Pretty incredible. Looks wondrous. Did I not say so? No, we won't negotiate. Willing to help, but first I gotta figure out where to start. No need. I know it all. Miss Daphne and Sir Gareth shared a terrible and fearsome laugh for each other. Yet to prove himself worthy of her hint, Gareth was to face the Witch of Lynx Crag. 
Before Sagareth set off for the hill, Miss Daphne gave him her kerchief, a token of her favor. Let me guess, he never returned. He did not. She stood here, day upon day, night upon night, trying to spy him. Till she sprouted roots and turned into a tree? Wonder why. I will fecking tell you why. To await the moment when Gareth returns, kerchief in hand. That is the power of love. The power of longing. So you must scale Lynx Craig. Search there for a means to free Daphne. I will give you my book of tales to refer to. And good luck, Witcher. Okay. Tales and fables. I just noticed it when they showed me the camera angle earlier. But if you look at the tree like this, it really does look like a woman. You can see... Like, there's a humanoid shape there. The head over there. And you can see breasts. Wow. Daphne's Wrath. Morose Golem. Oh, okay. Oh, it is a special golem. Long years of solitary study tend to make mages somewhat eccentric. As the years pass, lay people begin to irritate them more and more. Feel like I've read this before? They are dense, unreliable, disobedient, and determined not to understand the gravity of mages' work. They display emotion when they should show discipline and self-mastery. No wonder mages have long considered the best companions to be artificial constructs. They themselves bring to life and designed to follow their rules and meet their needs. Professor Moreau was no exception in this regard was his dutiful servant and companion, in good times and bad. Moreau's golem was also an excellent guardian. Massive, unyielding, and devilishly strong. All in all, he was a tough nut for a witcher to crack. Yeah, see, normally golems look like this, but this guy seems a bit smoothed out. Hmm. <laughs> anyway. Rollicked. Spectre. Daphne's Wraith. Wraith, not Wrath. During his stay in Tucson, Geralt became involved with a curious case of gynodendromorphy. <laughs> that is to say, a woman who had been turned into a tree. When one cut into the tree's bark, it bled, and when the wind blew through its leaves, one could hear muffled sobs. Geralt investigated the matter and learned magic, or possibly a curse, was responsible for the transformation. And it surely had something to do with a certain sad episode from the woman's past. The love of Daphne's life and knight errand had gone to the Witch of Lynx Crag and never returned, leaving her to wait for him forever, filled with sadness and longing. Wasn't Lynx Crag the witch responsible for the Spriggan stuff with Francois? Some kind of tree witch? It seems like we're gonna be fighting against a wraith though. Lynx Crag, all the way over there. Yeah. Why not? Along the way, we can do some question marks, do some Vermentino stuff, do some Night for Hire stuff. Okay. Do you actually want me to read the Tale of Fables? How about we'll read it once we get closer to Link's Crag? For now, I will just head over to the closest thing here. Can't say we've ever come across that kind of curse. A woman potentially being turned into a tree. So like her material body turned into a tree? Or is it more that it got trapped, her spirit got trapped inside a tree? That might be a little bit too specific to get into. Alright, what's going on here? Oh, is this a night thing? Box Hollow. Grab the harlot's fruit. Yes. Oh, Ow. Yes. Praised be the prophet Leviosa. Too late to surrender. Ow. Life is. I've accidentally walked into this. Even more so. I need Tony Owl and Hangman's Venom. Shall we dance? Yes, that's what I want. Get the guy? Oh, come on, man. This shall drag on too long. You gotta die one by one. I'll 
miss you. They're all surrounding me. I really gotta be careful here. Who has the least health? Let's focus on the one guy. Shall we dance? And the one guy in the back there trying to get at me. Grab the harlot's brute. It's nearly snapped. At him. Ow. Um, ba -dum. Oh. Um, ba -dum. This seriously seems like it's a bandit specific thing. Bandits in Tucson? Pam param, pam pam param. He's casting spells. What if it's like a secret code? If I learn it, I'll be in the cahoots with the bandits. I would love that. <laughs> He's saying it so often. You'll never learn. He's signing to me somehow. He wants me to do something about it. Oh, finally. I feel like I'm trying so hard to remember the new one, I forgot the old one. Pam param, pam pam param. What was the first one? <laughs> I seriously can't remember anymore, oh my god. To some bandit devils. Hey, everyone's back. You brought peace, and somehow Ethan made our ladies more eager. A thousand thanks, White One. You're very welcome. What's this place? There's a marker here. Fox Hollow. In a small valley at the foot of Mount Gorgon lies the village of Fox Hollow. This village's fields, inexplicably and miraculously, grow pots. What? Earthenware vessels spring unbidden from the ground, as if through some magic trick worked by nature. No human intervention required. The pots come in all shapes and sizes, which is why Fox Hollow maintains trade connections with the village of Dudno in... Mecht, for that village's fields, inexplicably and miraculously, grow lids of all shapes and sizes. What? This we gotta see. Where? Where are your pot fields? Show me! Oh my god! Why is there a random dead guy standing here? This guy's not even dressed like a bandit, what the heck? Pots? No, 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 backwards. Half breed. I'm sure we'll bump into that guy sooner or later, but I'm really wondering where your pot fields are. Show me. You can't give me that description and not let me see. Where are they? They scoffed at you. In my country. Oh, sorry. Here's some free advice, witch man. If you've no reason to live, live to spite oh. others. Yes, yes. Somebody else has already given me that advice before. Oh, whoa, look at that. Why is it so colorful? Maybe there is some strange water flowing down here, huh? Weird. It's all pink and stuff. It seems like a lot of poor people live in this place. But it's really nice. We really rich runs through the town, upstairs and downstairs in his nightgown. <laughs> oh, here's all no the dead people. About us poor folk. Boy, is my bum if I ready to blow. Ritbug, centennial foot and crab. Hello, Geralt. Hello. You know my name. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the loot. I'll finally be able well, to drink. why not? Who's to tell the and witch how to I'll drink to your health, witch. What was that? Hey, it's nice that I got all the loot here, but where's the witch pots? How is everyone? I don't see the pots anywhere. 
They summoned a witcher. Uh, well, I've spent Howly five that beast devoured me. I'd get some hmm. peace at last. Oh well. There's an in here. The oh, ruddy brush auberge. Oh. <laughs> Watch your flint blinking step. Green to red. Mutagen transmutator. Hello? Praised be our Lord Lepiota. You come in his name. You are his avatar. Nope, just a witcher who happened to be passing through. By the prophet's intervention. He was your guide. He nudged your footsteps here. If you say so. What shall we call you, hero? <sighs> I'm Geralt. Geralt of Rivia. Geralt! Lovely, it rings. Sacred it sounds. Do you thirst? Or hunger? With that attitude, you better be giving me everything in your store for free. Know much of the local history? Found a few elven scrolls while wandering around in the area. These notes, they describe what happened to the elves who used to live here in Fox Hollow. I know nothing. Now would you like aught to eat or to drink? Does she really know nothing? I don't remember in what context, but I do remember the name Fox Hollow coming up quite a few times within our journey. Mm. Let me see what you're serving. The typical... Typical... The wine merchant back in Beauclair Port had a similar amount of money as the shopkeeper here. That guy's really not doing so well. I think he's gonna have to shut down the place soon. Take care now. You are sorely missed already. She's totally weirding me out. Hmm? <laughs> oh boy, two books! On hunting basilisks, a compendium. The last basilisk of its kind. A study in ecology. Okay. In our lands, that is to say, in the fair duchy of Tucson, the hunting of basilisks has a long and storied tradition, one reaching back to the dawn of our present history. Attesting to this is a note written by one Xenon of Tritian, a leather worker, in the year 1023. In it, one finds mention of a commission for a corset to be fastened from hide of that winged serpent, called Basilicus by some. While lesser hides could come from beasts felled by age or hunger, the costliness and expanse of this corset would have necessitated the skin of a basilisk taken in its prime, and therefore required a hunt. Without the engagement of a witcher, or as a last resort, a knight or a mercenary, such a hunt would have perforce meant the gruesome death of the foolhardy hunter. Yet those adept at the task, witchers chief among them, hunted basilisks and their cousins, cockatrices, with great success, thinning their numbers till a mere handful remained. To give but one example, in the year 1100, basilisks of the Regulus platinum subspecies dotted skies all across our land, yet in the present day, only one exemplar still lives. Regulus platinum? Maybe it's silver or something? The last basilisk of its kind. Based on my observations, I have concluded all species, be they plant, animal, or even insect, are inextricably intertwined with one another. It is no mere coincidence that felling of the beech woods and the vanishing of the rose who in them once dwelled led to the disappearance of the sterling basilisks as well. The principle even holds true for ladybirds. For the betterment of learning, I conducted the following experiment. I eradicated all the aphids in the palace cabbage patch using a lye solution. Within a few weeks, all of the ladybirds once present in that patch, and there were hundreds, migrated to a neighboring field. A simple experiment, yet it gave controvertible proof of my hypothesis. Oh, this book actually had nothing to do with basilisks. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, because you're taking away its food source. The circle of life, something, something. Yeah, let's finish reading this now, too. Ooh, it's kind of a long one. Sir Gareth and Miss Daphne loved each other so much it hurt. To win the approval of his future father-in-law, Gareth had to perform seven challenges. The seventh was the hardest. Gareth had to go to Link's Crag, find the witch who lives there, and convince her to lift the drought that plagued the whole land. Everyone, including Daphne, 
pleaded with Gareth to humble himself before the witch. You see, the witch from Link's Crag was spiteful and headstrong, even for a witch, and only an act of true humility could break her icy heart. Gareth, however, had no intention of bending his knee before a witch. Instead, he planned to force her to lift the curse. Nobody knows what happened on Link's Crag, but Gareth never returned to his beloved. Daphne stood on the top of a hill and looked for him day and night. Finally, she turned into a tree so that she may live to see the return of her knight. Such was the strength of her longing and the power of her love. Anyone who plunged his axe blade into the tree would see blood run from the wound. Folk started to avoid that place, leaving Daphne in peace to wait for Gareth. In time, all had forgotten about her. Until the lumberjack read the book. Hmm. Why did this lady randomly have so many books about basilisks here? I'm kind of suspicious of her since she was like, oh, I don't know anything about the notes. Maybe she really doesn't, but you never know. Uh, I've sweat dripping down my bum furrow. There's so many cucumbers here. Okay. Yeah, it's all just crap here. This is how I always end up with so many things in my inventory. I gotta, I gotta stop, but I can't. Okay. Link's Crag is right here. I think we should head over right now. They said there's a witch on Link's Crag. But what kind of witch are we talking about? Like a sorceress? Kira Metz was called a witch by the people around her, wasn't she? Or more like the witches of Crookbag Bog. That kind of witch. Or maybe just a local herbalist who knows a few alchemy incantations about this and that. I'm guessing it's gonna be the Crookbag Bog kind, but maybe not as strong since those ones were not quite normal either. When I was a young maid, we adhere to certain... Ah, greetings to you. Greetings. Ah, greetings to you. <laughs> greetings. Have a nice walk, old ladies. Be careful. It's a dangerous place here. Not attacking. Doesn't mean it's not a threat, though. What? That's weird. What's the guy doing? Oh, kids playing around the fields here. Okay. And there's a random panther just chilling out. Whoa, look at that. There's a cage there. An open cage. Lynx Crag. Lynx! Cat! This whole thing is cat related? We're here to talk, but I definitely feel like we should be prepared. Entrance. Mm, before we go in, let's check out the house. It's so high up. A hut. The witches. This is open. Hello, witch? Hut looks inhabited. No sign of the dweller, though. Guess I'll look around. Certainly looks like there's a lot of stuff going on in here. On the transmutation of bodies. <gasps> From a human to a tree? The transmutation of bodies is one of the most difficult tasks any mage can undertake. Indeed. Only the true masters of the art have ever accomplished it, and even they have only perfected one of its forms. This difficulty arises from psychophysical limitations, since a mage can only safely transform into an animal with which he is perfectly attuned. A famous example is that of Ulf Blackbeard, who dwelled for years in a cave with a bear in order to imbibe the life essence of that animal. Liber Ivanis. Liber Ivanis. Conclave of mages banned this tome. Ooh. I then came to a place known as the Pnath Valley, in a world known as Shagai. The mind of man cannot comprehend this land, where non-geometric space 
and blasphemous colors fly in the face of everything our eyes are accustomed to. In that instant, in the moment of my arrival, I teetered on the verge of madness. I shouted a noiseless cry and sweat bloody sweat when two suns rose above my head. I fell to my knees and prayed to the Zodake, not for salvation, but for a quick death. And then they came. Ooh. Spooky. Bones ground into dust. Rotting flesh. Ugh, fiend's eye? The mirror's broken. Remarks on the proper administration of yarrow. Notes on the use of yarrow stems. Interesting. Yarrow is, first and foremost, used for medicinal purposes. As mentioned above, when the leaves of this herb are placed against the flesh, they heal all kinds of trauma, wounds, and sores. Brew it, and the resulting tincture treats the common cold, colic, and loss of appetite. Yet, in addition to their healing properties, the branches of the yarrow plant can be used for fortune-telling. This method of divination might seem strange upon first glance, but in truth, simple and effective. It truly allows one to focus on the query at hand and gain an answer both accurate and satisfying. I'm guessing she wasn't trying to heal someone's wounds with a yarrow. Mm. Whoa. Mm. A wall of spell enhancements or trophies. There's a handkerchief. Silk kerchief, monogrammed DF. Hmm. Could use it to break the curse if it's Daphne's. None but feral cats stray in here most oft, yet it seems I forgessed from afar at that. What do you seek in my home? I didn't get to look at the other stuff. Already found it. You do not aim to lift the curse from the tree, girl, do you? What if I do? Then you had best know you waste your time. The old tales? Did your nan not tell them to you? Even I, the witch of Lynx Crag, would be hard-pressed to overcome the power of love and longing. How long ago would this be, though? Because it was long enough ago that it got put into a book as a fairy tale, as a fable. I feel like nobody currently living should know about this firsthand. The Lady's Knight, you ever make it here? Sagaras. Yes. He came to sway me, but had a quick change of heart. To be precise, it came after the first night we spent together. He stayed a fair while, then his conscience got the better of him, and he resolved to return to his beloved. Might have resolved to, but never made it. A tragic fate befell him along the way. You have anything to do with this turn of fate? Of course. Was I to let another woman have a man who belonged to me? <laughs> I could not abide it. Would it be a little bit rude to ask how old you are? We can try asking. What if I asked you nicely to lift the curse, please? Gareth met the fate he deserved, and what happened to his wench was not my fault. All right, so you didn't cast the curse, but could you help lift it? I probably could, but why ever would I? Hmm, I'm not an expert with this kind of curse lifting. She probably knows more than me. I'll humble myself, prostrate myself before you like the Gareth of the Tale did. I beseech you to help me. Lift the curse that imprisoned Daphne in the tree. Whoa, this is not what I was thinking. When I saw you enter my hut, I thought... Now there is a fellow who shall bend his neck for no one. Stand. None, not even I can restore to the less the yes she has lost 
can erase the suffering she has endured. We cannot bring her back to life, but I shall tell you how you might let her depart in peace. Yet my aid shall have its price. A lock of your hair. <sighs> how can I know you won't use it to cast a spell on me? I require this. I must, for with it I will cast a spell to conceal me from you for all time, and will use it for nothing else. You will nag me never again, and you've nothing to fear, I assure you. I always keep my word. That sounds really suspicious. Why do you think I'll nag you? I don't even know you. I'm kind of interested to see what will happen though, even if it's bad. <laughs> I'll trust you against my better judgment. Lock of my hair's yours. Oh, this is such a bad idea. But I want to know what'll happen. Splendid. What do I need to do? You must convince the maiden her beloved yearned to return, but perished in the attempt. Take her silk kerchief and a fragment of Gareth's remains. His bones lie bleaching in the cave beneath this rock. Fire must consume the kerchief and remains. And remember, your heart, your intentions must be pure. Clear? Yeah. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. And adieu. Once you walk out that door, never shall we meet again. I kind of wanted to finish looking at your house first. She locked it! She locked it! How rude! I wasn't done looking at the pot or the stuff on the wall. <laughs> now that might be trying a little bit too hard to get into her house. She seemed like an average human woman, but it's that kind of unseemingness that makes her even more dangerous. I bet she's really powerful. And I'm guessing that was probably not her true form either. Okay, well... We did see the cave already, earlier. The entrance is here. Right? There's actually two things here. Two entrances? Okay. Well, yeah, I didn't think we could save Daphne, because it's probably been too long. But if we can let her pass in peace, then that's not a bad option either. Oh? What was that? <laughs> That lady. Kiki more worker. Hmm. No, I think we should probably do cat here. I wonder what would have happened if we try to do this ourselves. Well, I can't break it. If we tried to break the curse ourselves, then we wouldn't have to give her a lock of my hair. But apparently she's just using that lock of hair to make her disappear from me. It's not that I don't trust her word, but it's kind of weird why she would need that, because I don't really plan on bothering her ever again. I just stumbled upon your house, that's all. One time. Oh, quit it with the toxicity. Quit it. Damn it. Whoa! Uh, what? That's not- no! <laughs> what did I press just now? I think Undying saved me? I tried pressing the white reference decoction, but I think I accidentally pressed the Gwent thing. <laughs> oh, we gotta get rid of this. Goodness. Maybe this isn't the right cave here. 
bunch of kinky mores here. Get rid of that. Here? Hmm. Here. If Gareth really loved her so much, why did he go and lie with another woman? A knight's plate armor and some bones. Gareth's remains? These then? Wonder why the armor came apart. Magic? Gotta get just back to the tree. Right. Lift the curse. He fell from the hole here? The one little gap. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess so. Sure. Am I missing anything here? Ooh. Is that a panther? Out of curiosity, though, can we check out the... Oh no, this was the other entrance, right? Because there's two entrances to the cave here. I guess that's that. We can go back to the tree now, but along the way, we can go visit a Vermentino problem first. We didn't even get to go to the question mark earlier because we got sidetracked by Fox Hollow. Oh, and there's also things behind me. But for now, let's just go back. Yeah. Of course, it would be right in the way of those dogs over there. If we can just kind of walk around them. Remember how much trouble I had with the wolves in the beginning? Oh. Herbalist's hut. Too slow. Given me no choice. What's going on here? Why are you bullying the herbalist? The herbalist doesn't even make that much money, does he? I'm just trying to think from an economical perspective here. Of all the people you can rob, is the herbalist really the best one? Oh, we haven't gotten that in a while. That one stab kill. I owe you my life, unknown knight. How are you dubbed? Dubbed Geralt. Geralt of Rivia. My thanks, Sir Geralt. The Skullywax thought to demolish our herb garden, you see. I thought I shall take a hum, scare the rubble off, but to my great chagrin, there were too many and I, I failed. Ah, there's no use crying over spilt wine. Come with me to Vormentino. I'll patch up your armor or pound the anvil to fulfill some other need you might have. Right now? I'll come by later on. Go ahead. I'll stop by when I'm in the area. Thank you. He's very grateful and all. Armorer. So this must be one of the armorers who got kidnapped or just held up from work? Uh, these people came for your herbs? I'm very sorry to tell you, but that's probably what I'll be doing when I'm here, too. You have a really nice little hut here, though. I like it. Oh, everyone's locking their doors these days. Because they know. They know about the witcher who's been going into people's houses. Fair enough, fair enough. Fine. Okay. Now we can head towards the question mark thing. Although it seems like there's one nearby here too. Like across the pond here. It's pretty dang close. Might as well. Is it the thing right here? Whatever that is? Yes. Bandit camp. Hey everybody! Did I get a piece of you, Grey Groin? Thanks! Charge! Take him for a ride! You even have an arena here! Come on! Ow! Oh god! Nancy Knight! Nancy boy! 
come on. Oh, you should be dead. Thank you. Wow, it seems like you guys looted a whole bunch of stuff already from who knows where. Orders on bloody paper. Carlo, sending you another batch of hayseeds with big dreams of vanity. Train them well as only you can and send me the tough ones. Drown the others in the pond. Loth. Was Loth one of the people on the posters? But damn, how many bodies are in the lake there? We don't even know. Four oh eight. Codex of Loth half breeds Hans. Loth, Loth half breed. Rechain dogs and russet rags, forced to stare into the manner of the rich and rot with jealousy. We toil in their fields for a few pathetic crowns. We've not even got a great war, no great tragedies. Our great war is fought against ourselves. Our great tragedy is our banal existence. Our elders raised us to believe one day we will throw off our weighty burden. But that shall never happen. Slowly, we have come to realize this, and that has us rip roaring with rage. Loth's hands gives those who join something in return. It shows them that without pain, without sacrifice, the Hans would achieve nothing. That by joining its ranks, they will get what they have always desired. But to grasp this, they must be ready to fight for their lives. Because when you come here for the first time, you must fight. Ah, so that's why there is this field here. It's their little fighting test arena. The commonality between Loth, Halfbreed, and Philibert, Fourfingers, these are all people who... I guess they saw that their current way of life was not right. And they try to take matters into their own hands to make it better. And they probably all think they're doing the right thing, even if they're stealing from people or killing people and whatnot. I don't think they would think they are the bad guys. Everyone's the good guy in their own story. And they've become leaders of the Hans because they found a whole bunch of people who subscribe to the way they think too, so in their minds, they're all good people. Or maybe they just don't particularly care about being a bad guy. Mm. Now we have one more question mark here. Maybe a monster nest? <gasps> a rock troll! Ugly bastard. Rabid rock troll. I've never seen a rock troll, not in a cave before, I don't think. This is kind of strange. Ow. Oh god, he already killed somebody. Damn it. You're so thick. Oh, did that do too much? Against these slower opponents, Using Rend is actually okay, because we have time to do it. The problem with the Rock Troll is that we gotta attack it from the front, though. Ow! Sorry, little buddy. Were you eating people? What were you doing here? Oh my lord. Whoa, this guy's rich. Rag scrap with writing on it. That's a new icon. We've never seen that before. Written in blood on a scrap of fabric. On the scrap rent from my own garment, using my own blood and a fragment of bone from some unknown creature, I read a summary of my sad tale, for I shall surely perish forthwith. Perhaps one day, a bard shall happen upon it and compose from it a ballad to squeeze tears from the most pitiless miser. Some time ago, I spied a monster roaming in proximity to my estate. Upon further investigation, I learned it was a she-troll descended from the Gorian foothills. I thus scraped together a few crowns and went to the Camerlengo to request he hire a knight errant to slay the monstrosity. Yet as I was making this journey, Said she troll sprang out of the bushes, knelt down by my horse, and professed something in the garbled speech of trolls that I took to mean she had chosen me as her bow. Since it is most ill-bred to be rude to a lady, even a monstrous one, 
I declined her politely and was ready to be on my way when she tossed the sack over me, tucked me under her arm, and carried me here to this clearing. She locked me in a cage and stared at me for hours, sending creeping shivers down my spine. So now, I slowly starve to death, for while she gives me clear water to drink, my only food is the soup that she troll spends all day brewing, a foul concoction reeking of carrion and onion. I would rather perish than put that slurry to my lips. Oh wow, this poor guy was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Would you really rather perish than drink that though? It's a matter of survival here. Was this the brew? Let's extinguish it so people in the future can't drink from it. Oh, you poor misguided troll. So the camera lingo, there are contracts from other people? Like, people will go to that place and be like, Hey, I want to put up a contract. I want to hire a knight. I want to hire a witcher. What's the appeal of doing that over... just posting a notice on the notice board yourself? Because I imagine it would be more expensive, right? You would have to pay that place and all? Well, I guess on a notice board, you're hoping for someone to come across your contract, but if you put your contract up at the camera lingo, then... Somebody has to take it. Some knight who's looking to make a reputation for himself. Oh wow, that was some unbelievable luck there. <laughs> we just happened upon the guy again. Hey. So? You met the witch, you must have. What did you learn? That witch? She's not near as bad as folks say. Made me bow and scrape, sure. But I know some sorceresses witchier than her. Joyous, bleeding news, but what about Daphne? I can lift the curse, free her. By performing a ritual, making a sacrifice of her kerchief and Gareth's remains. But we gotta start at the right time. When the hour comes, I'll light four fires for the four winds. Then begin the ritual. Fires? Then I shall be of use to you after all. Seems you need wood. Much of it. Chop as much as you can. I'll see to the rest. Lovely. Thank you for offering to help. It's not something we come across very often, despite all the contracts we've done. I've chopped and stacked the wood. What now? My turn. Gotta light fires and talk to the woman enchanted in the tree. No idea how this'll turn out, so just in case, stand at a distance. And if you see me draw my sword, run. We did get a bestiary entry for the Wraith, so we should be prepared. Light the southern fire. Look your last to the world's four winds. From the south, not a word. From the east, no cry is heard. From the north, silence sighs. From the west, pure hollow eyes. Cease your vigil. Dead he lies. Hear me, you who hide beneath this bark. The day of your freedom has come. Behold a kerchief, proof of your love for another. DF. Daphne something? Behold, a bone of he to whom you offered your love. Gareth, my Gareth, he shall never return. No, he won't. Is his love for me gone? 
did he stay true? Ooh. If we want her to leave peacefully, we would want to say, yeah, of course he did. He just couldn't come back for... He met a great tragedy. I don't know, though. Hmm. Gareth broke his vow, failed to stay faithful. Man is built of mud and filth, milady, and is like to blunder we all are. How cruel is the world to render conferring one's love so hard? But what would the world be without love? Here, here. The time comes that I depart. I've waited too long. I've suffered too much. And now I wish to go. Farewell, milady. I thank you, stranger. And you, my knight. I thank you for speaking to me. For standing vigil at my feet. I did not think it would end this way. I hoped we could revive her. But I guess it was not to be. Happily ever after doesn't often happen in life, sadly. You did well. Here, your pay. And the book is yours as well. Thank you. Thanks. Take care of yourself. So long, Witcher. I must think. Put this straight in my head. Well, that went peacefully. Although I'm assuming that didn't have to be that way, judging by the best Jerry entry. How true, though. Why is it that the people we love so deeply can hurt us the most? But just like the woodcutter says, what would the world be without love?